Yo, what's up, everybody? It is Thursday, October 17th. This is my last and final cowboy hat. I only have four of them. So for those of you who are sick of me wearing cowboy hats and you think I'm just being an idiot, this is the last one I'm going to do. So uh, anyway, today uh, we had, I think it was a new closing high in the S&P 500. And uh, NASDAQ started out real strong, but not much happened at the end. It gave back most of its gains. Um, what I am seeing is actually, uh, I'm kind of surprised at the um, how rapidly this is unfolding, but the decline in interest income transfers when you compare it to last year, especially uh, with a T bill, the T bill discount. Somebody asked me to explain that. that. That's essentially the interest rate paid on T bills. You know, T bills are sold at a discount. So, in other words, at par, let's say a hundred, if the T bill is priced, uh, you know, at par, which is a hundred, and it's sold at ninety-five, you know, that's a five point something percent interest rate because it matures at a hundred. You buy it at ninety-five. You get a hundred back, and you get you pay ninety five you know cents on the dollar. You get a dollar back, so that spread is the interest rate. So when I talk about T bill discount, essentially what I'm saying is the interest rate paid on T bills. It's different than bonds, where bonds have a coupon that's an attached interest rate. Okay, you pay the the, the full price and you get an interest payment on that. With T-bills, there's a discount, you pay it, you buy it at a discount, it matures at face value, and that difference, that maturity, what you earn, that is the interest income. So that's going down, that's going down right now by about a billion dollars a week, and that's gonna increase as the Fed uh, cuts interest rates. Today we had the ECB cutting interest rates, so all these central banks, with the exception of Japan, and they stop their rate increases. All these other central banks are cutting interest rates. The ECB, China, they're making a big deal about China, the so-called stimulus, which is like QE and interest rate uh, cuts. The Fed, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, the Australian National Bank, the, the Bank of New Zealand, uh, they're all doing it, okay? So uh, essentially, what happens over time, it's like a fiscal contraction. They're, they're just slowing down or removing those interest income transfers. Now, what I wanna talk about today is a comment that a viewer made, which I think was a very interesting comment, and I, I feel like I wanna address it uh, when talking about you know government spending and the money created from that. Uh, and the viewer uh, said, well, that goes to malinvestment, malinvestment. I'm not even sure that's an actual word, and I'm not being critical of, of the, the viewer and his comment or her comment. Uh, it sounds to me like a Peter Schiff kind of word, but that malinvestment, and I think it was um, referenced in regard to like it's going into military it could be going into other things which i basically agree with so like this is not a criticism of the comment i just want to clarify that malinvestment that term if that's actually a term let's assume that it is that that's a political term i mean somebody's malinvestment is another person's productive investment i mean clearly for the defense industry that malinvestment is a productive investment. Um, now you could argue with that and that's fine, but that's a political argument. That's not, that's not a fiscal or a monetary argument. I mean, the government has the ability to spend in its own currency in whatever things it deems, you know, appropriate to spend in. And if we live in a democracy, then it's we who decide, supposedly, anyway, it's not really a democracy, it's a republic, uh, it's a constitutional republic. We elect um, uh, representatives, we send them to Washington to hopefully carry out our desires. You know, as hey, I don't wanna be cynical, but uh, you guys know that it doesn't always work out though, that way. But let's assume, let's just, 
you know, for the sake of argument, let's just say it's a democracy, you know, would I like to see more investment in, you know, infrastructure, basic science and research, healthcare, education, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, do I like a con to live in a country that's uh, strong militarily? Yeah, I like that too. So, I mean, that's the trade-off in a democracy. And yes, we have been funneling a lot of that spending into defense. But don't forget that the biggest line item of expenditure for the federal government is Social Security. And I frankly, I don't think that's a bad thing because I think that keeps millions and millions of seniors out of poverty. I think it sustains the economy. It provides income support so that firms, you know, that's another thing that I've been talking about, which I think most of you get, maybe some of you don't get. Businesses need customers. Customers have to have uh, purchasing power. They have to have buying power to buy the products of, of firms, of businesses. This is why like I listen to Elon Musk who's absolutely a freaking genius, but when it comes to um, government finance, he really is clueless because he wants to cut massively uh, government spending. And number one, he doesn't realize that his companies, especially SpaceX and also Tesla to a, maybe to a lesser extent, were the beneficiaries of, you know, uh, um, high levels of government invest investment into these areas. I mean, he's he's standing on the shoulders of basically what NASA did for 60 years, okay? And that was all government spending. So like, he doesn't understand that if you cut to the degree that he wants to cut, a lot of his customers are gonna go away. I mean, Tesla needs customers, SpaceX, needs the support of uh, the government or customers. I mean, it just, it boggles my mind that these people don't understand that. Like, like the money, where does the money come from? From outer space? I mean, if you are in a dollar system, okay? And remember that the United States is a net importer. We run current account deficits, which means that the foreign sector is not contributing in a financial way to the economy of the United States. It's contributing in a real asset way. In other words, we get the goods, which that is, that is, represents the, the, uh, our standard of living, okay? The stuff from China, like, when you think about it, like, you know, all the things we get from China, electronics, uh, machine parts, um, I don't know, textiles, whatever, all these things that come, that, re that is a part of our standard of living. Like think if you didn't have these things, if you didn't have the electronics, if you didn't have the machine parts, if you didn't have the tools, if you didn't have all the things that we import from China, which is basically right now just about every manufactured thing, if you eliminated that, at least initially, until we could uh, reproduce that here in the United States, our standard of living will go way down. So yes, um, they are the financial beneficiary. We send them the dollars that we can basically create without limit. They send us the goods which represent our standard of living. Do I think that's a bad thing? I'm I'm ambivalent on it. Like if it could be produced here, that's great. I don't care where it comes from. I'm saying that I would like those things because, and I believe me, folks. I live a very simple life. I'm out here. I live in the boondocks. I drive a beat up old pickup truck. I'm not fancy. Somebody could deliver a Ferrari in front of my house today. And I would say, thank you very much. You can take it back. I like my beat up old pickup truck. 
Okay, I like to go to the gun range. I mean, I'm a very simple guy. <clears throat> I'm not fancy, okay? I don't go to ballet, I don't go, I left New York because I never took part in the cultural aspect of what was there. And that's not a criticism of that, that's just me, all right? So like, I'm not saying I need all these things, but there's certain things, you know, that represent a standard of living and we get that from because of our imports. You can't look at him like Trump is saying, and, and you know, full disclosure, I'm going to vote for Trump. But Trump is saying he's going to put these massive tariffs and that's going to autom automatically translate into um, production of those things here in the United States. We don't know that. We don't know if we even have the productive capacity to mimic what China has been doing. We don't know if we have the skill level in our labor to mimic what China has been doing. It will take time. It's not gonna happen immediately. I'm not gonna say it's never gonna happen, but it's not gonna happen immediately. So like when you're talking about malinvestment, you have to understand that's a political decision. That's not an economic decision. Okay, economics is separate than that. We decide as a society, you know, what we want to, uh, you know, where we want our government to be focused. And as a society, we're really into a really, really powerful me uh, military. Okay, I mean, you can't go to a ball game without freaking, you know, F-18s flying over at the beginning of that thing or, or a, a NASCAR race or something like that. So, I mean, and, and everywhere you go, it's like, thank you for your service, um, <clears throat> which I find to be great. But I mean, that's not a function. That's not, um, you know, automat necessarily automatically attached to government spending. I, I don't accept the term malinvestment because I think it's, again, it's one of these, you're looking at it from one angle. It's like saying interest rates going up, that's a bad thing when you're not looking at the receiver of that interest, okay? You gotta, you gotta always understand that there's two sides to the equation and your malinvestment that might be my productive investment, all right? So like, you gotta be really, really careful with that. Anyway, um, on the markets, it's gonna take some time. And believe me, I'll be honest, like I'm following this data every single day and I'm pretty sure that my outlook is correct. I'm looking at the numbers if the numbers start to, to veer off from, from, you know, if I start to see interest income transfers increasing, if I start to see leading flows and net, not so much leading flows, although that's a very important, net government transfers increasing, then I'm going to have to pull the plug on this outlook. But we're only like 10 or 11 days into the new fiscal year. Got to give it some time. The first month, a lot of volatility in the data. Uh, so I need some more to make a determination. Anyway, that's it for today. Please like and subscribe if you choose to. If you've already done that, thank you very much. And don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. No more hats tomorrow, folks. I'm all out of hats. Maybe I'll wear a Yankees hat. Go Yankees.